Welcome back to the channel. This is part three of repairing our NEC Turbo Express. In this video, we're gonna look at mostly the mods needed for the new three and a half inch screen that was purchased from console five. So if you're looking to do this kind of mod to your own Turbo Express, stick around and we'll show you how to get it done. Okay, I wound up doing more work off camera than I was expecting to. Um, the board was kind of in a mess. So I'd like to summarize uh, where we're at. Um, so as previously mentioned, we had no five volts, we had no 29 volts. Both of the rails were basically shot. Um, we, there was damage to the five volt regulator system that we couldn't track down. Um, and we were unsure if the original LCD was shorted out or if there was a problem with the actual backlight um, or the backlight circuitry, although everything checked out. So where we stand, we installed a five volt regulator, uh, a, a totally standalone part. Um, these can be had uh, off Amazon actually, and they're fairly inexpensive, only about $10 for a pack of five. Um, they can be set to a specific voltage, although I don't always recommend uh, using the solder bridge um, because the, the voltage may be a tad high or a tad low depending on the application. Although this is a five volt system, we know from the factory they were usually set at about four and three quarters volts. So they are adjustable with a uh, pot and that's my preferred method. Um, so uh, we lifted the Zener diode and our large transistor off the board um, previously. <clears throat> And we found a nice clean spot to mount the regulator to. I caught a ground off of the backside of this capacitor. The battery input comes from the original five volt circuit and the voltage out feeds the five volt rail directly at one of our memory chips. So with that, when we put battery power on it, we were able to get the main processors to boot and we got sound from our game. Uh, the next thing we needed to tackle was video. Um, this particular component, uh, sorry, composite video outboard came from uh, our friends at Console 5. Um, there's a lot of my parts that I order through them. Uh, they have great customer service, and even though this isn't a paid uh, promotion, I do recommend um, using them if at all possible. Uh, the other thing we did is um, we replaced the fuse. I had noticed that the, the original fuse was gone, and um, it was just jumped, which is always a bad idea, especially when you're having problems with the board. We're lucky that other things weren't burned out. So here again, these came from console five and they're fairly inexpensive and they fit a few, a few of the devices uh, such as this and uh, the Atari Lynx. Um, I will actually put description and links down below. They will not be affiliate links at this point, but I'll head you in the right direction in case you need any of these parts. So, the uh, video board went on top of uh, one of our processor chips and the video grounds had to be lifted, which then are grounded back through a common ground. Um, and then it gives us composite out, which can drive an LCD module. The power for the LCD module is coming straight off the back side of the switch, which is a fused power source. Uh, the only thing we had to do with this board, since it comes from the factory needing uh, a minimum of seven volts to operate, and while our pack in here is nine volts on fresh alkaline batteries, as they 
age and the voltage sags, we might have video issues. So what we wound up doing um, is we removed the first diode in line because we're gonna not accidentally plug this in backwards. And that saves us about three quarters to a one volt drop across that diode. Then we directly wired to our three volt regulator. Um, this is the only, only regulator we need on this entire board since we're only using the one input. Um, this modification is actually shown on Console5's website. Um, and where we stand now is, if we plug in our battery, and insulate that from the shielding on the back of the screen. As you can see, our Turbo Express or PC engine, depending what part of the world you're in, is now back up and running, which should make the owner very, very happy. Um, the next things we need to accomplish are more mechanical. Um, <clears throat> we need to remove the original screen. It's only held in with a few screws and we need to trim the outer shell to fit our new three inch screen. And here again, our friends at console five have made a kit for the holding the screen and the driver board and it comes with a template that we'll use on the on the front side as a cutout also they made a new um, main screen or a you know front screen it's glass and the masking on the front is bigger but it still says NEC and Turbo Express at the bottom okay Let's go ahead and prep our outer shell and look at, uh, look at how the new screen is going to fit. So for now, we'll just pull our ribbon cable. We've already removed our battery pack. And we'll gently set this all aside. So we need to remove the screws around the case to remove it from housing. Set those aside. We'll find the other one in a moment. And I believe that's all we need to remove to get the screen out of the case. Although this one's being stubborn. There we go. There's the original LCD. And just for comparison, there's what we're replacing it with. So this one has the typical issues with um, blurring or ghosting with uh, the old uh, active matrix type screen. Um, and this is a new modern LCD with none of the issues, not to mention it's significantly larger. Okay. Well, we might as well remove the joystick and the speaker also, since we'll have to um, go out into the main shop to do some cutting and some grinding of the, um, of the housing.
And since this circuit board will be out, although I believe whoever worked on it previously, this one's actually in fairly good shape. Um, this will be a good time to also clean the pads and clean the board. Oh yeah, they definitely need clean. turbo switches. There we go. Well, I guess we shouldn't forget about the buttons. Okay, so now our shell's empty. If we're careful, we should be able to just, yeah, we should be able to just push up on the back side of this screen and it should start to lift out and we can work our way around. If you're careful, this one's in extremely good shape. It's not scratched up. I'm sure somebody else with a Turbo Express would very much appreciate having a screen in good shape. Okay, and here's our template just to take a peek. <clears throat> it fits in like that. So we should just go ahead and mark it now. Got a small scribe here. Oops. We've got a nice light mark around and I will go out to the garage to trim our case. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just wanted to share the method that I decided to trim the case with. Uh, one of the first things you have to do though is to remove this small post and a pair of flush cut snippers and a chisel hobby blade will remove any rough edges. But I contemplated using power tool on that, a rotary tool for you know hobby use, but I didn't want to cause any damage because this shell is actually in very nice shape. So the method I decided to use was to just score and crack the plastic. So our mark is already there. So if we come in just beside it and use a very sharp hobby knife, we can draw a second line. Not the whole way across because we don't want to hit this side of the case. But now that we have that track in place, the knife will stay in that slot. And I'm using quite a bit of pressure. Okay. So if you drag it through a handful of times, we can turn the case around and come from it at this side and start light on the first one, just so your, li your lines match up. Then after that, you can come in a little harder. And if you do that two or three times, you will have cut through about 70% of the plastic needed. And then we can come down at an angle like this, just a few times 
to make sure that we're through. Then we can come back in with our flush cut, snip the corner, just so we know we've got a nice spot. And then if you just come in and give it a push, it's gonna call me a liar this time. Let's go ahead and get in this edge a little bit more. And something else you can do to help get this apart is just come in here and make a couple snips. And then you can just push it out. And it actually leaves a pretty clean edge, but I did not get the whole way to our original mark. So after I take out this one, we can use just a small uh, jeweler's file to clean up that edge. And also from console five, it says we're gonna need to notch the back side of these posts a little bit for the LCD to fit. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that off camera and I'll show you what we end up with. Okay, we're back from trimming up our screen or our shell, I should say. Um, as you can see, we took it right out to the edges of our lines um, from the template. Uh, this plastic was actually a little softer than I was expecting it to be. Um, and the scoring and the cracking did very well. And uh, just using a, a standard metal file really worked the lines flat and right into place. Originally I was gonna use a jeweler's file, but I figured a little bit, a little bit wider of a file we're going to help uh, keep everything squared up. Um, so now where we stand, um, we've notched out the back sides of our posts. Uh, the LCD seems to fit fairly well. The speaker has to be mounted, but because the new screen and the new, new brackets um, that were supplied from console five, um, the speaker has to be rotated from its original position. Um, I don't think there should be any problems as there's enough length on the wire. You just have to watch how it's routed. Um, so let's go ahead and put the speaker in and just kind of get a look to see where everything's gonna fit. Of course, the magnet on the speaker is stronger than my screwdriver, so go in there. There we go. Okay, actually that misses the solder pad without a problem. But as long as we keep it tucked down and out of our controls, everything should be fine. So let's just drop everything in real quick, just to see where we stand. But before we get too far, let's go ahead and clean our pads and our board. There's just a little bit of residue on it. It isn't as bad as I thought. <clears throat> you can see uh, we are getting a little bit of carbon but not too much. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and clean our board. Now these are carbon traces on the board, so you don't want to get too aggressive with them. Um, you, if you damage them, uh, the resistance through the board will be incorrect. Okay, 
So we'll set that aside for a moment. All right, everything is in the way it should be. Uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna have to, you know, while you're working with the board, you can unclip the, L, the, the ribbon cable, but sometimes it's, it's easier just to leave it together. Um, let's go ahead and remove our film from our LCD. At this point, we need to be careful. So we'll set our board, our LCD in. We'll set our board back. Just take a peek at how everything's looking. Okay. So this alignment board, looks like it's gonna clear the speaker. Looks like it's notched out for the, the cable. So we're gonna run our driver board up through it like that and then bring it back down. Let's see if we can get it all squared up. There we go. As you can see, this kit really sets it up nicely. It holds around the original posts. It holds our new LCD in place. And this will fit on top the board. The driver board will be on top and our original uh, hardware is gonna hold this all together. So we've got our screen mounted. There was a few burrs on the 3D printed parts. Um, you may want to check for those before you put it all together. But now we have it all down and flat, as you can see. I believe that's all the farther it goes down. And our new top mount will go here. And this should all be held in place with the original hardware. Now, if you're working on a Turbo Express or a, a PC Engine GT um, that had already been modded, the kit does come with this bracket, which I believe is supposed to be glued in place. Um, but it's some of the older screen mods, you had to remove the two top screw mounts. So we have our screws in and the driver board is going to be mounted with the double-sided tape provided. Um, I don't recommend putting it on this ribbon cable, so we're gonna let's see. What are we gonna do with that? Um, I'm actually gonna split it so our board is supported on both sides. Um, so let's just cut a piece off here. And since this is gonna fold up like this, let's sit just about there. Okay, I'm going to put it here and here. Just beside our cable. Okay. 
Most of these double side uh, tapes, the adhesive is obviously pressure sensitive, but putting pressure on it for about 10 seconds can really set the glue. Now, obviously we have an LCD panel behind this. We don't want to get too aggressive with it, but now it's mounted where we don't have to worry. Okay, everything's square. Now, remember we moved this speaker, so we're gonna have to make sure our cable, our speaker cable isn't somewhere where it's gonna get damaged. Let's make sure all of everything's in. Everything looks good. Square it up, make sure the pins are in place, and let's get a screw in this. Just see what it looks like. Everything's mounted in the shell. Just give it a little press, make sure nothing's sticking. Okay, everything's looking good. We can go ahead and plug in our speaker. We should have enough clearance to just flip that around and get her mounted in there. Good. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now let's come back to our board. The ribbon cable obviously is gonna go here and we can get this all mounted. I need to go locate our mounting hardware. I'll be right back. But I started thinking before we tackle that side, why don't we go ahead and get our new screen put on before we cause any damage or get any scratches or scuffs or dirt behind this LCD. Um, sometimes a little hobby knife is what you need to get under it. Now, this one, as you can see, has the paper film. So don't make the mistake of just pulling up this, you know, the adhesive side and thinking you're ready. Because this particular one you gotta get that piece of paper too. And it's a mistake we've all made by putting a new cover down. And uh, not pulling both sides of the film. So let's see. I know a lot of people don't like to pull this up, but when it's this far of an overhang, don't have a whole lot of a choice. It's hard to get it square otherwise. Just trying to see. There's one little mark. Okay, that's on the outside. Oh, look how nice that looks. Our friends over at uh, Console 5 did a very good job in uh, producing a glass screen. Just make sure it's pushed down around the edges. And we'll set that aside for now. <clears throat> Sorry, I seem to have a frog in my throat today. Okay, so let's come back to our main board. We're not going to put the... Um, the shielding back on. Uh, it, I, I think we might need the room between the new driver board and of course with our, our extra parts that we've uh, installed. So I've put a little Kynar tape on just to hold some things in place and also to cover our adjustment pot so nobody 
decides to adjust it. Um, so let's go ahead and get some screws back into this. And first we start with our cartridge slot and these are full size screws. So we use a full size screwdriver. Be careful with, although it's not used really anymore, the, um, there's a ribbon cable here on the side for the TV tuner. Um, it's a very interesting um, add-on. Unfortunately, since all TV signals now are digital, it doesn't have a whole lot of a use. And that's going to be too small. We may have to locate some more hardware. Uh, unfortunately, some of the original hardware was missing uh, from, from this project. Okay, at this point, um, we need to start thinking about putting our board in. But since we're not using the original LCD cables that would you know, just plug in here, we need to think about how everything's going to line up. So. We're gonna get power off this side of the board, but our video is gonna come in from the other side of the board. I left quite a bit of wire on this, and I believe we can just come up, we're just gonna come up beside the cable for the um, game slot and that should yeah that should give us plenty of wire to work with so our soldering iron's hot move our power out of the way for a moment and we're going to solder these wires to our video connection. Sorry if I'm in the way of the camera. And to our video ground. Okay. You can see there we're on our video chip now. This should be enough to stay out of the way. And be careful with your TV tuner ribbon cable. It's a neat add-on, but it's not very usable any longer. And there are some people that are modding their systems to um, take advantage of this port as either uh, a video out port because of this mod, it does have now have the capability of going out to a TV or they use it as a, uh, a port to uh, add a second controller because this is a Turbo 16, uh, Turbo Express 16, um, sorry, a Turbo Graphics 16, um, just the way it is. So let's go ahead and get this ribbon cable in. When you put it in, this cable can take a little bit of stress. You can pinch it to push it down, but try not to crimp that. Even though the tuner is not usable any longer, we don't want to cause more damage for an owner who may want to play with it. Um, in the screws. Um, so, you know what? Let's make sure our switch is in before we put the screws in the case, just in case we need to lift it. Um, just like uh, with an original Game Boy, this is kind of captured underneath. Also, there's a tab that needs to come in underneath that will be exposed, and this keeps the cartridge from being pulled out when uh, the game's running. So 
I don't know if this one, okay, this one will sneak right past the board and it'll drop in and we're good. And now we can put uh, this, the one screw up here in the corner. We decided not to put the shielding back on this, on the main board because we needed the extra room potentially for our uh, driver board for our LCD. And of course we have the video mod on the other side and a new regulator on this side. So I felt it was probably best to just go ahead and leave those off. Not to mention it will help with any kind of cooling uh, that may be needed um, with the new parts. Although I let this run for about an hour and a half to two hours on the bench just to make sure there was no issues. It's always best to lean to the side of caution. Um, we know that this board doesn't put out much RF, so, so we're good with this mod so far. Okay, and our power, even though our wires are kind of long, um, we're going to take it off of our switch, which should be on the other side of our fuse. <coughs> and we're going to just use a ground that used to be our board, our, um, our shielding. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we're gonna get our positive power from this top pin on the switch. This is for our LCD. And we're gonna go ahead and take a ground off of our old shield. Okay. Okay. And I know some people may say there's way too much wire, but there should be plenty of room in the case for this to be tucked back. And it makes it a lot easier to work on later when you have to open it up and move things around. Okay, so we have power, we have video. Let's go ahead and get our joystick controller board in place. This ribbon cable's pretty robust. It can take some pressure. But like always, you know, be careful. It can be ripped. Uh, Console 5 does have a replacement on that particular cable. So let's just lightly set this case together. See where we're at. Make sure our wires are tucked in. <clears throat> and we're just gonna put in a couple of these screws just so we can give it a quick test. And keep our fingers crossed. Um, knowing the condition this came in to us, um, I'm feeling pretty good about the condition it's leaving. So let's go ahead and get some, make sure our power's off, put some batteries in it. Oh, and by the way, uh, uh, five volt regulator that we used to um, replace the original. It was set with a bench power supply at a, about 9.2, 9.3 volts. And we set the output just under five volts. Um, and then we turned the power supply down to five volts and we were still outputting at a about 4.6. Um, so that's actually a much wider range than the original um, power supply would have, or the original five volt rail would have been able to handle. So if everything went right, look at that. Our volume still works. We got a nice big screen. I'll finish putting the screws in this off camera, but for now, I think we're gonna have a very, very happy owner. Thanks for joining us. If this video was helpful to you, 
or if it was entertaining at all, please subscribe. It helps support the channel. Thanks.